there is no interaction with anyone, not even verbal. It's just you and that computer screen that you're going to shout at. And no, I think do it like a film. Play the game, couple of hours, great, done. But then you should be playing it for the multiplayer element, not just sitting there hours on hours on hours on your own. Because being, we're not designed to be on our own. Jerry, video games are the latest craze to sweep the country and most of the world, too. Millions of people are addicted to hours of gazing at electronic images on game screens and arcades and in their own homes. Video games have been around for over seven decades, continuously growing, evolving, and developing into what we have today, all the way from the 1940s. Their popularity has seen the UK games market sell over $4.2 billion this year on games alone. Video games have evolved to false realities seen through goggles. However, none of us really knows what it is doing to young people in today's society. Do I think video games are safe for young people today? Not completely. I think gaming affected me in a positive way growing up because you used to get your friends around and play multiplayer games together back when you had to play on one TV with a split screen. It'd be more fun than now playing online. You're still playing on your own in your room and you're not with your friends having a laugh. You're on a headset and a lot more isolated. I just don't think it's... I had a lot more fun playing games when I was younger compared to now. It's just a time, time consumer I think now for a lot of people they just do it for the sake of it rather than I have a little social event, have a few friends around, play some games, order some takeaways, something like that. They don't people don't do that anymore. When they first came out in the nineteen seventies, like I said, Pong and Atari following that were just simple and uncomplicated. Good family fun, nothing brain taxing about them, just easy to play and a good laugh. Socially, it was fun time with the family. It, you know, we got the consoles of Pong and Atari for Christmas, as I was later on with my own children, the Wii, and it, it was a good family time together. Fun, laughter, a um, bit of rivalry, um, but good fun. I think they're more addicted. It becomes a major important part of their life. There's no social activity with friends, everything is done on a screen. In 1947, the very first type of video game was invented by Thomas T. Goldsmith Jr. and Essel Ray Mann, called the Cathode Ray Tube Amusement Device. This was the earliest thing considered as a video game. But then, they evolved into arcade games. Well, the first video game that I would have played would have been Pong. Next one would have been Space Invaders. And I first played that in an arcade. That was so addictive. And I used to be really good at it as well. And I loved it so much I, I bought it on the PSP when I got a PSP. Space Invaders Extreme. The graphics were very basic, nothing like what you get today. Today is really kind of lifelike, a bit too lifelike sometimes, I think. Certain games, I suppose, can help with hand-eye coordination. So I think some games can be good in moderation. And again, it's everything in moderation. Play a lot of multiplayer online stuff, EVE Online. Which I have to say is the best game. It's one of those things that's continued to evolve and just go on. I suppose gaming has affected me socially. Yes, it's, it's changed my social dynamic. I'm not the go out down the pub. It, it's putting me into a new social group. There's not the standard, you know, it's taking me out of the standard groups. Um, so now my group is online, people who I never ever see. And personally, I think gaming 
is when it's measured and controlled, not this kid goes home from school, you know, kid, an adult even who goes home from work, sit there, microwave meal, fuck the computer and they're on it until they go to sleep. I don't think that's a good thing. But there's no way to check your age online. You're still relying on that individual putting in the correct date and birth, you know. So Facebook, age limit 13. How are you ever going to enforce it if you can't? So no, but I don't believe it's a safe enough place yet. I think young people are affected differently now to games to when I was. I think a lot of parents now just let their children do what they want when it comes to that. They'll just buy them a game because they've asked for it, haven't looked into it. Age restrictions don't really matter to a lot of people anymore. When I was a child, sort of say 12 to, I don't know, 15, 16, I weren't allowed to have an 18 plus game because the age restriction meant something. Now there's so many young people playing things like Grand Theft Auto where anything kind of happens and their parents don't know what they're doing. Parents playing video games for something that their child has done but they're not monitoring what games their child is playing. Look at the age ratings, let's do it. Future Gaming, have you seen the film Ready Player One? Full VR immersement, but that's what I think is coming. I can see it. Future of Game will, I can only think, will get worse than what it is now. I think the barriers, the moral standards will come down even further unless someone stands up and say, look, this is wrong with what it's doing to young people. Um, I just think it will be allowed to continue the way it is. The corporations that bring these consoles, bring these games out, you know, they're just seeking to be more shocking with them, more horrific with them, just to, and that unfortunately appeals to people. I think they're going to be more and more immersive. I could, ima I could imagine like a hologram appearing in your room and you fight them, that kind of thing. And I think that would be really bad because it's kind of like the next step is actually going out and doing that to real people. So, we've seen how gaming has changed throughout the years. Today, there's an increased awareness of how they might be affecting children and adults' behaviour, with calls of time limits and tougher regulations on certain games. We've seen the positive and the negative involved within the gaming world. Now it's up to you to decide what you think. What are you going to do to keep your children safe?